Bitcoin hits a new all-time high. John Deaton writes to the court on behalf of XRP holders and the judge gives a response in short order. If we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. And on this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. And don't forget to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now you can see we are green today, hence the green background. You look at the screen, we've got green across the board. The market is up 5% to 2.65 trillion with Bitcoin hitting a new all-time high today, currently sitting at 66.3 Ethereum, 4100 XRP up to $1.15, up 6.5% on the day. So we are seeing nice movement across the board as you look through the top 20 cryptocurrencies and even further on down the chain. It's a great time to be in crypto, which is another great opportunity to remind you with Voyager, you can earn on your crypto earning over 5% on your Bitcoin this month. 5.75 uh, on your Ethereum earning 4.6 and Cardano at 5%. So lots of good opportunities there if you are looking to earn on your cryptos. Now, John Deaton is out with a new video today. It just dropped as I was about to start recording, but I did get a chance to listen to a good chunk of it. I'm going to go back and finish it, but you should check it out too. In this video, he talks about how every coin is in danger because of this case with the SEC. The SEC is looking to set precedents, and if they can get this against Ripple, then they can use that leverage in future cases and just refer right back to it. So it's really important, regardless of your feelings about Ripple, the company, or Brad, or Chris, or whoever, that you want the SEC not to succeed here because a success here will knock down the dominoes in the future for other crypto cases. Make sure you check out his channel, watch this latest video, I'll link him down in the video description so you can see it. Uh, make sure you drop that like on his video, hit that subscribe button for him too if you haven't already. He is almost at 12,000 subscribers and should hit that today if you do your part. Now in his document library, he has just posted the latest two items in the case. So one is the letter that he submitted and then immediately after is the response from Judge Netburn. Now he just submitted this yesterday. The response already came out this morning. We'll take a look at both. We'll talk through them. It's really short but it's really important and impactful for us as XRP holders. So this is the letter submitted yesterday October 19th to Judge Torres. Dear Judge Torres, after significant deliberation and hesitation, coupled with the fear of annoying this honorable court on the heels of the court's order granting Movins, the XRP holders, Amakai status, I respectfully request the court consider the perspective of XRP holders as it relates to the SEC's request for a two-month extension. So remember, we just discussed this. The SEC wanted two months. The Ripple team offered up four weeks. So the court has yet to make a final ruling on what the timeline will look like with a possible extension here. But he wanted to submit this on our behalf. And if you're not on his list, make sure that you add your name there. Uh, over 50,000 XRP holders have a very vested interest in the outcome here. But this is what he's writing in response to that. Pursuant to this honorable court's order, XRP holders shall be allowed to assist the court by briefing legal issues relevant to the case as approved in advance by the court. Although your honor made clear that the court contemplated that such assistance will be most beneficial during briefing on dispositive motions, it was noted that the court may also exercise its discretion to request or deny further applications as appropriate. XRP holders respectfully request an application for the court to consider their meaningful perspective to aid the court in reaching a proper decision. Due to the time-sensitive nature of the SEC letter requesting a two-month extension, please accept this letter to serve as both the application for XRP holders to offer their perspective as well as an offer of proof of said perspective. Accepting our limited role in participation, XRP holders waited until Defendant Ripple Labs submitted 
its response to the SEC's extension request. XRP holders will not repeat any arguments or statements offered by Ripple and will be concise in offering our unique yet vital perspective for the court's potential consideration. Prior to the court's October 4th order denying intervention but granting amicus status, XRP holders proposed intervention as a class. Class certification was opposed by both the SEC and Ripple. Both parties agreed class certification would delay the case. Based on Ripple and the SEC's objections, XRP holders conceded that any attempt to certify a class of defendants may cause such a delay. And you can see what he's leading up to here. We didn't want to have a delay because of that, said the SEC and Ripple. Having the class would cause a delay. But now we're seeing the parties come out and offer up further delays in the discovery phase. This is where he's going to go now. This concession was significant for XRP holders, but a major argument offered by the SEC in its opposition to the motion to intervene was that intervention would hopelessly delay this action. Now that intervention has been denied, the SEC seeks a two-month delay. In opposing the SEC's request for this delay, Ripple's argument focuses on how the freezing of XRP markets within the U.S. impacts Ripple. And this is the most important part. Pay close attention here. This is about us. The negative impact on XRP holders is even more profound. As the court is aware, nearly every digital asset in the U.S. has delisted or suspended trading of XRP. In addition to owning XRP on those exchanges, many XRP holders hold XRP in retirement brokerage accounts. The XRP in these accounts, these accounts, pay attention here, really close. The XRP in these accounts have also been frozen due to the SEC enforcement action alleging XRP to be an unregistered security. You can't do anything with this because you can't sell and get out of your position if you so choose. You can't transact. The liquidity isn't there. And this is what he's highlighting. The lack of liquidity within the U.S. coupled with the mass delistings prevents XRP holders from selling or trading, selling, transferring, or converting their XRP. It is because of this de facto in-place seizure of their property that XRP holders took the extraordinary step to seek intervention as defendants, effectively requesting that the court compel the SEC to take enforcement action against them. Any delay in the underlying action marks yet another day XRP holders do not have access to their funds. I wish to re-emphasize my hesitation in writing this letter out of fear I may be stepping outside of my limited role, and I certainly do not wish to aggravate this honorable court in any manner. With that being said, as this case proceeds to the merits, I hope even if the court denies consideration of this request, the court will understand why I was compelled to submit this request. Respectfully submitted, John Deaton. So, representing the interests of the XRP holders here within the case, saying our assets are unable to be liquidated due to the restraints put on by the SEC. And of course, this also hints at the suppression to the price, though it's not listed here directly in the letter. Besides the lack of liquidity, the basic freezing of the price because of the SEC action is also another significant consideration for XRP holders. Now, Judge Netburn came back with an order here on this saying, the XRP holders request to submit a statement with respect to their interest in the scheduling of discovery is denied. So it didn't go through, but Jeremy Hogan points out here, the thing to keep in mind is that the judge read the letter, and that matters even if an official brief is not allowed. So regardless of whether or not we actually got this in, the judge did read through it. She saw the opinion of Attorney Deaton and who he's representing, which is you and me, holders of XRP. And it's good that the court is mindful and understanding of just how much interest there is in this case and the outcome that we hope to have out of this, just like Brad said just yesterday, clarity. No settlement without clarity because if there isn't clarity in a path forward, there's nothing to settle. 
And if we don't have that comfort and clarity as investors and holders of XRP, how are we going to be able to invest appropriately in the future? I hope you found this information to be helpful. Everything will be linked down below as usual. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I promise it'll be worth your while, and I'll do my best to keep you up to date with all of the latest news, case updates, and more. Hit a like if you found any value here in this video. Thank you so much for spending some of your time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Happy Hump Day. Have a fantastic rest of your week, and I will see you in the next one.